Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this presentation is titled Flying with Difficult Captains, Captain Vandercut. Now, that's not his real name, that's not a real picture, but if you've flown with this guy, you know who he is. Now, at the time this was going on, I was on the 27, he was too, and um, there was a fuel monitoring program. And the company kept track of captains who did really well on the fuel burn. They must be really efficient, good captains. Uh, they were a model for everybody else. And Captain Vandercut was number four on the list, and he wanted to move up. Now, in the center of the panel is uh, one of the older, which is what we had at the time, ACAR system. Uh, this reported information uh, to the company. And so we'd get a fuel load and uh, we'd start out the trip and he, we'd have like 20,000 pounds of fuel on board. And Captain Vandercut would, would tell the second officer, he says, well, okay, uh, put in that we got 19.5. And then when we landed, say we landed with, you know, 12, something like that, he'd say, okay, put in 12.5. You know, so he would uh, short the departure fuel and increase the arrival fuel by about a thousand pounds. And I finally said to him, well, <laughs> no, no wonder you're high on the list. I guess, uh, where would you really be if you didn't cheat? Well, that didn't go over well. And see what Captain Vandercut liked to do is he liked to ride crew members and he would start out with the co-pilot and he would work hard to ride the co-pilot. And, um, if he couldn't do that, he would move on down the line and in this case to the second officer. So, we got this trip, we're flying multiple legs, and um, we're kind of watching the fuel. And, of course, there was, on the flight plan, there was the expected burn. And it was kind of funny, because whenever he flew a leg, something went wrong. And his fuel burn, even cheating, was over the programmed fuel burn. So he wasn't doing so good. Um, and I was actually under burning, which is kind of interesting. And I kind of pointed this out to him and had a little chuckle with it. One time it got so bad. We're going into San Francisco and we got behind a Nordo other airline aircraft. Nordo is no radio. So we're getting vectored all over the place. And I'm sitting over there kind of chuckling because his fuel burn is just going way up and way up. And uh, he was very displeased. So um, at the end of about six legs, I'm keeping track of it and I'm going, okay, I underburned, I underburned, I underburned. And, and you were over, you were over, you were over. Well, he didn't like this at all. So he's, uh, you know, and, and, and you take a risk with a captain like this. Uh, but I was, I was dishing it, uh, back to him. So, um, ah, we we're going okay. And I, I think he got to the point where he figured he wasn't going to get anywhere with me. Well, an interesting aspect uh, to this story was I sit down at flight operations table and a crew member sitting there and he looks at me and says, eh, uh, we laid over at uh, Santa Barbara um, last time we were together. And I looked at him and I said, Santa Barbara? I haven't laid over Santa Barbara in about mm, four years. And you remember that we laid over together? And he looked at me and says, we flew with Captain Vandercut. And I go, oh, no wonder you remember. Well, we're sitting there on the ground at Santa Barbara and, uh, you know, the most fuel efficient takeoff was flaps five. So he tells the second officer, he says, I want a flaps five card. And this is when we had the little grease pencil. Uh, they were actually, uh, stop sign, uh, kind of, uh, shaped and they went in the, uh, on the, uh, radar, uh, display there, the little round, uh, uh, black and white radar set we had at the time. And the second officer would get in his books and he'd fill this out. And he says, give me a flash five takeoff. And uh, he, he throws the card back. He doesn't even hand it. He throws it back to him. And, and fortunately, the second officer caught it the first time. And uh, he puts it forward and he says, uh, I, I don't like that. Give me a flash 15 card. And he throws it back again. This time it glances off. The second officer's panel actually goes out the door into the cabin area the second officer has to unstrap, get up, go out there and get it. He goes, come on, around, hurry up, hurry up. We need to get going here. So he goes and gives him the flaps 15 speeds. Hands the card back up. He looks at it and goes, ah, I don't like those. Give me flaps five. And he throws the card back again. Second officer has to scramble to get it. And uh, he says, come on, come on, hurry up, hurry up here. And he's sitting there, he's writing it down. And <clears throat> what the poor second officer had not done was record the flaps five that he originally put there. And he, and, and, 
Captain Vandercut is going, come on, come on, hurry up, hurry up here. So he hands the card forward. And one of the things that you did as a co-pilot on the 27 is you did a little mental calculation of what the speed should be. And I looked at that card and he had not changed it from the flaps 15 speed back to the flaps 5 speed. And I said, uh, I think those are still the flaps 15 speeds. And Captain Vandercut looked at that. You could see the veins coming out in his neck. His face was turning red. He says, what are you trying to do? Kill us? And he throws the card back. And I said, wait, just a, and I used a not a very good term, uh, minute, uh, swear word. I said, wait, just a swear word minute. I said, you have been writing him. I said, it's lucky that's the only thing he got wrong. I said, why don't you give the poor guy a break? And, well, that was kind of interesting. Because you never know how a captain's going to react when you kind of come back in his face. And this guy just crumbled. And it just shocked the heck out of me because I thought I was going to get an absolute <laughs> tongue lashing and thrown off the trip. He comes back and he says, well, oh, 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 he should have, he should have gotten it right. We can't, we can't have these speeds wrong. You should have gotten it right. And I said, well, just calm down and give him some time. And after that, things went fairly smoothly. He couldn't ride me and he couldn't ride the second officer. And, uh, yeah, he was a pleasure to fly with. Thanks for listening.